This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHE certified inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. If you hear typing in the background, that's uh, her 1972 keyboard that Pam uses. <laughs> anyway, uh, today we, you know, we've just tiptoed into March. Uh, you know, there's still plenty to get done around your home. I'm in that place right now where I I can't decide. I desperately want to do an outside project, but it's still several inside days. You know, I don't know. So anyway, join the conversation with us this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. How are you guys this morning, Pam and Jeff? I'm awesome now that the sun's out. Oh, tell me. I am so glad this sun is out. Uh, I've got uh, three pads on the ground, four four building pads on the ground that we can finally start uh, uh, getting something going. Right. And uh, we started our um, fourth handicap full house build. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite exciting and the sun's shining, so... I have nothing to complain about. Good for you. Good for you. Hey, Pam, how about you? Well, you know, um, a couple of things. This Women in Construction Week, I didn't know that. So I'm going to, like, maybe have a party or sell them, do something to celebrate. That's just awesome. I know. Isn't Women that cool? Women in Construction Week. Yeah. 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 A whole week just for Hallmark Pam. Card. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hallmark. Is there a Hallmark card for that? Right. <laughs> There will be now. You said it. There will be now. Right. Yeah. Maybe I, I need to patent that. No, uh, to celebrate that, I'm actually, um, I am going to jump outside on my next project. I was uh, helping a friend of mine. Uh, we hired a crew to put in a French drain for them and um, got it mostly in before the rain started last week. But I was checking out the weather forecast and I've needed one at my house for quite some time. So, I think I'm going to cap off Women in Construction Week by installing my French drain. Oh, that's a good idea. And it yeah. sounds like plenty of work for you. All right. Well, I've got the hole dug. Oh, okay. Well, you <laughs> know what? Now that the hole du- the hole is dug, it's fine. It's That's, that's, that's the like the worst part. work it's, ever. It yeah. is. It's the worst thing, nastiest thing. And then all the rain started, so i got to clean it out. But I have one of those uh, mantis... Um, tillers. Hey, can I borrow that? I'm telling you. Okay. That thing. <laughs> I love that thing. When I get done, yes, you can. I won't charge you much. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. <laughs> Mighty nice of you. Uh, so... One of the things I was thinking, it's, it's funny, I drove this weekend. I went by uh, a small kind of uh, hardware store, and I also went by one of the big boxes, and they were both slammed on Saturday, absolutely slammed. And then, of course, they got cold again. And I thought, I wonder what all those people bought that day to work on their their <laughs> seventy degree day, and now it's thirty five again. So I, we're just in that place where I don't, I don't like. I said for me, I have inside projects for the winter. You know, like I, I painted the kitchen, that sort of thing. You know. Uh, and then I have outside projects, fences and decks and stuff like that for the for the spring. I'm ready for the spring ones to start and, you know, being well, you outside. Know, here in Mississippi, Jason, you could do your outside project one day and your inside project the next day. Because that's how You're we exactly right. here in Mississippi. And that makes we my brain fine. Ice storm, yeah, ice storm and 20 degrees one weekend and the next weekend it's 81. Right. So it brings shorts and a <laughs> toboggan. Anyway, uh, March is Women's History is uh, Women's History Month, and we want to take some time to recognize National Association of Women in Construction. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, women on uh, women make up ten point three percent of the construction industry. We know this to be true because Pam is the point three in that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
March 7th. Not quite point five. No, no. March 7th through 13th, 2021 is National Women in Construction Week and was created to highlight women as a visible and viable component of the construction industry. This is, uh, we talked about this a little bit last week when we were talking about, hey, uh, when your kids are thinking about what they might do for a living, don't count this out, folks. This is this is a great thing. And yes, of course, it's absolutely open to women. And one of the neat things is the people that make the most business in construction are what we call craftspeople. You know, uh, they're very specialized people who, who who deal with specialized products and they can make quite a bit of money and those things are typically more detail oriented uh so if that's the kind of person that you are you can get into that or if you're just like me and like to swing a hammer they've got those jobs too so um but but do look into this uh March 7th through 13th National Women in Construction Week and it was created in highlight you know, women in construction. So look into that. Anyway, uh, we've got a good day of calls and emails. I wanted to start off um, this morning real quick with a, with a with an email that I got, guys, and it's just really this one's this one's tough. Okay, so has anyone been successful? This is part of the question here, guys. Has anyone been successful putting up TV brackets on plasterboard wall? Oh, I can feel this one already. I seem to be having a nightmare with mine. I'm using proper plasterboard plugs and the correct thickness screw for the plug. But I still won't, it still won't hold up properly, and I haven't even attached the TV yet. So uh, what do you guys think? Is it, this is in plaster. I've worked with plaster before. One thought that I had putting up a large TV like that, rather than trying to put the the TV bracket to the plaster is maybe get a piece of wood, which can, you know, like a panel of wood, which could then be attached to the plaster properly. And then the uh, TV mount can be attached to the piece of wood. That was just a thought I had. What do you guys think about that? that Jason, that, that, that you took the words right out of my mouth. Get, get a big enough piece of wood to go stud to stud. Right. Be it plot, be it a two by twelve, whatever, um, and go stud to stud. Uh, plaster is is um, there's a reason we don't do it anymore. Right. So um, that that would be my suggestion. The other suggestion, which is too labor intensive, mm-hmm. cut cut the plaster out, put your blocking back in, and then try to patch your plaster, which is just. It's too labor intensive and too expensive. Well, and that's you know, and I don't know if 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 uh, a lot of folks know that if you've not lived in a home, you know, built you know, I guess before the seventies, you know, that if you've not lived in a home like that before, uh, plaster walls. If you take a nail, a small nail, and you hold it up to the plaster, and you use a hammer to tap it in there, it doesn't put the nail in the wall. It cracks the wall off the wall. It literally, right. it, it just right. falls off in your hands. So so it, it doesn't work like uh, going and, and uh, taking care of it. It, it yeah. is not a friendly product. No. So, all right. Well, and I don't, what's the weight load on plaster? <laughs> no idea. You got to get to that stud. <laughs> yeah, that. that. Pam, and just the sheer, how much labor did it take to, you know, do that? Because remember, it's all over lath. Right. You, uh, that's what I was going to say. It's you, you know, you, you put your framing coat. material, <laughs> then you put your lath, then you put your metal, then you put your plaster. Man, that sounds yeah. like a lot. So it's a lot. Yeah, I like Jeff's idea. I would probably get me a nice piece of. Um, You know, go out to the big box store and get me a nice piece of uh, wood or something Mm -hmm. and then attach that to my studs and then put my bracket on that. There we go. All right. uh, We've got a a phone call in, guys. It's Avery in Madison's on the phone. She's been waiting a minute. What's going on, Avery? I've got questions on two garages that I have. One, uh, the house was built in 1950. It's on a conventional foundation, but they attached a a garage with a concrete floor, but moisture is always there. Anytime it rains, it gets real wet, so they probably put it down without a moisture barrier. So my question, what can I do to uh, uh, correct that? 
Uh, I'm, not, I'm not getting anything. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Didn't get that one through. So what he's got, he's got water uh, on. Uh, is this a, did you say it's a, a basement? No, it's a garage, an attached garage. Uh, garage. Uh, with a conventional foundation house. Right, with a conventional foundation house. But it's it's getting water, guys. How much water uh, is this thing getting, sir? Avery? Well, it's it, it just, whenever I have a heavy rain, Sometimes water might wash in. Other times, it just when when the weather is very humid, uh, moisture will just appear. Uh, I guess it comes up from the ground, so it's just a, a thin thin layer layer of moisture, guys. That that uh, that he's seeing coming up after rains. Um, that that he's seeing come up, and and I don't know if there was any weather. Um, uh, weather work done on the concrete when you put it down do you know if there was any land prep work or anything done avery i i think not uh the house had already been built when we bought it so i'm assuming they didn't put any moisture barrier but it sweats all the time basically just guys it's a carport that sweats um and Ah. so and and i you know the dirt they didn't really change any of the dirt uh going in they just basically you know concrete over and not really thought of any preparation or anything like that what can be done at this point well let me tell you something that a personal experience uh, i've had with this uh, project that we're doing over in bellhaven we were putting in we did some foundation work and then we're coming in behind it and putting in a french drain and when the contractor dug down um, there was sub uh, surface water really underneath the concrete yeah well it was and we think it's coming from an adjoining lot so there was water moving toward the house so i'm real interested to see what's going to happen now that we've put in a solution to divert that water you know we may have to come back and do some adjustments on the foundation but if you've got subsurface water really the best way to tackle that in my opinion is to get either a landscaper or foundation person who's used to putting in these French drains and and look at putting a drainage, some type of a drain around it. All right, Jeff. No, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Pam. We're we're doing a foundation repair in Madison right now. And I think we put in about 63 pilings. Well, we dug our exterior pilings, came, came back the next day, our holes were full of water. Full water. <laughs> so, it, the uh-huh. long story short, here we we put in a subsurface subsurface drain to and and the thing was the water's coming from up above uh, the neighbors a little higher, so the water's coming from up above. So we we basically put a dam, if you will, and it's not; it's a drain, and that carries that subsurface water. Uh, away from that foundation. Huh. Uh, Something interesting, so. too, Jeff, whenever you do that, what we found in an older light is that there had been a drain and a tree had grown into it. Well, yeah. yeah, that can happen, too. Now, I'm not sure this is Avery's problem, so I'm going to answer Avery's question in another way. All right. If it is simply... Uh, um, Sweating? If it is condensation on the slab caused by there was no plastic put down before we poured the slab, that that would that would create that. So if if that's what it is, I think Pam that we can simply put in a epoxy coating over the existing uh, um, garage slab, a carport slab, and take care of that moisture problem. Interesting. Now, if if it is truly subsurface water, you don't want to trap that water because now you're going to start building head pressure and 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 make the problem even worse. So. Yeah, that was my concern. Is if you put that epoxy down, right? You got water coming at it now. You really well, have a problem. That, you know, we're 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 answering these questions over the radio, right? Being able uh-huh. to look at the situation. Right. So I, I think we I think we've given him two answers to the water. Uh, there you uh, go. Solution. 
All right, Avery, I hope that helps out. It is time for our first break of the hour. When we come back, we're going to answer your home improvement questions and tackle these end-of-winter fixes. And, yeah, they're out there. Uh, Also, uh, if you have any questions about your recent home improvement projects, Call us, 877-MPB-RING, that's 877-672-7464, or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ryder Taff, Portfolio Manager at New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advisory and co-host of Money Talks. Each week, we take your personal finance questions and tell you about a money topic we hope you find helpful. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org, or on your smart device's podcasting platform. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHI Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and Licensed Contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. Join the conversation this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We're going to do one of those emails right now. Here we go, guys. Uh... Wow. Pam, I know you've seen this a hundred times, but here we go. I just replaced an old smoke alarm that was wired in. The new one runs off batteries and no longer needs to be wired in. Can I just cap the wires that were there before and tuck them behind the new smoke alarm? (laughs) I hear you. Ah, I hear giggles. And I'm going to go ahead and... Throw throw the flag down now. Y'all go ahead and race to talk. <laughs> well, I mean, you really need to buy a smoke detector that's going uh, to... the One of the things about those that are wired in like that, Jeff, isn't it that they... I mean, so if the one in their bedroom goes off, it sets the one off in the it, other side of the house? Most definitely. And that's the reason we do that. If... if Let's just say you have a two-story house or if you have a bonus room. And uh, we, we want every alarm in that house going off. So most definitely go get the one. And, and, and they're cheap. They're, they're not expensive. Go, go get the one that is wired in. You can get them at any of your lighting stores and simply unplug and plug back in. Now, the one that plugs in also has a battery in case your power goes out. Right. So... Okay. Does that it, sound right? Look, I cannot, I cannot tell you the amount of fires that my company um, has worked on, and there were no smoke detectors. It, it's very dangerous. So that's a, it's a real stickler with me. Check your smoke detectors, please. All right. Uh, well, let's go to the phone right now. We've got Jackie and Summit on the line. What's going on, Jackie? Uh, we have a farm, an old garage. Uh, concrete floor and there's oil uh, on the floor. What can I do to remove it or absorb it or clean it? She said oil. <laughs> oil. Okay. And uh, uh, Dr. Pepper. Yeah. All right. Dr. I'm gonna, Pepper. All right. Pepper. I'm going to leave it to you guys. Put it over ice or put it on your oil stain. It, it works both ways. It works both ways. Yeah. And it, I, what it does to your guts a totally different thing because if it cleans that stain, what's it doing in my stomach? <laughs> now. Obviously, the older the stain, the less effective the Dr. Pepper is. It works It works wonders on fresh. Um, so I would start with that and um, see if that does improve. I cannot believe we're recommending a soft drink for this. I know. I, know. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, let's uh, let's keep moving. Thank you very much. I hope that helped out with the question. Let's keep on going to um, uh, let's keep going to Richard and Brandon. Richard, what's going on, man? Good morning. I, I got a question that about everybody runs into sooner or later. What is a surefire surefire way of finding a stud behind a sheetrock wall? Okay, we've had a couple of answers to that recently, and uh, and I'm going to give you the answer that I have, and then I'll hand it off to Pam and Jeff, because apparently this is a 
a feeling thing, some, something that uh, y- you, you like this method better than that method, because there's a lot of different ways. Mine is there's this one thing. I, I hate to call the name of this thing because it's the worst name of a product ever. It's called the Stud Buddy. Um, but, <laughs> but all it is, needs one. I know everybody, everybody needs, needs one, a yeah. stud buddy. but it yeah. was, it, <laughs> it basically is about a seven inch long yellow magnet that you rub around the, the, uh, the, the sheet rock. And as you go by the sheet rock, it basically shows you where the screw heads are for where it went from the sheet rock to the stud. So that's basically how you're locating your stud is by finding the head of the metal screw that goes into it. That is the method that that I use. Uh, does that uh, have you ever tried that one? I tried some years ago, and I don't remember having a lot of success with it. <laughs> I, I guess I can try it again if that's what most folks try to do. Well, let's let's see real quick. Uh, we might have some other options. What do you, uh, Pam, Jeff? How do you guys do it, or what do you use? Well, Jeff I, uses a flashlight. That's right. The flashlight is foolproof. All right, all right. Go for it, Jeff. Tell us tell us how it works. Put the, put put the flashlight. T- turn the lights off in the room. Darker the room, the better it works. Turn lights off. Put your flashlight on the floor, shining up the wall, and just roll it down the wall. You will see every nail head and screw head in that wall. What? <laughs> Put the flashlight on the floor. That we use no, not on the floor. Right. But it's like eight thousand dollars. A right. flash. You get a flashlight for what? A hundred you know, bucks. A yeah, good one. A hundred bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, uh, if you want a good works. one, I mean, there's nothing you can't replace. I mean, a good flashlight, folks, get a good one. Don't get those cheap ones. I made I one will cost a hundred dollars. See where the studs are on your wall. I don't think you have to spend much more than two eighty eight on this, but uh, <laughs> you can buy hey, Pam's hundred dollar flashlight. If you get a hundred dollar one, you can watch the flying squirrels at night That's in the true. trees outside. That's true. Try it. I think you will call back in and say, you know what, Jeff, that thing works pretty good. It, it, it really does. So, all right. So, uh, hope that works out for you, Richard. Very cool. Let's keep on moving. Number to call is eight seven seven MPB ring. That's eight seven seven six seven two seven four six four. Okay, another email that came in. Here we go, guys. We have. An, oh, wow. We have an older home that has solid wood doors throughout the interior. Nice. Very nice. My two-year-old is going through a door open closing phase. <laughs> that translates to my ears as slamming because the doors are so heavy. And I'm looking for a good solution to make the doors harder to slam. I've seen dampers online, but they mostly seem like over-engineered for what I need, even though about uh, stacking rubber washers between the pin and the hinges to see if that would slow the action sufficiently. (laughs) Have you solved this problem (laughs) DIY or otherwise? I solved this problem with, uh, I'll just say for my personal thing, we had this issue on an outside door. It was like a screen door. Uh, and every time one of the kids would come in, the screen doors, uh, would, would pull back, right? Uh, with the springs, the springs would pull it back, wham, into the, into the side of the door frame. So what I did was I went out and I got one of those things that you see on the inside of screen doors, which stops any door from slamming. And it's that kind of pneumatic rod thing, you know? You put one side on the frame of the door and one side on the door, and it won't let you slam the door. That's one way. All right, what do you guys think? You, you know you know another way? A two-year-old's, uh, um, um, uh, what's the word? Attention span right. uh, is very short. So he's going to grow out of this thing in just a few months. Right. So. So you're here. You're saying the best DIY for this project is earplugs. Yeah, leave it alone. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm telling you, we'll quit one day. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, or just take the door off until they outgrow it. Really? Yeah, but he can't. Ta- he can't take all of his interior doors off. Why not? I don't have any doors. 
Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next call. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, doors are so overrated. What do you need a door oh, for except for the bathroom? Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Well, we know where you stand. So, all right, folks, it's time for another break. We're going to take a break. We'll return. We'll still have time to answer your questions. Also, look at all kinds of options for home improvement. If you want to join today's show, give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We'll be right back. Hi, Larry Morrissey with the Arts Commission, reminding you to tune in for the Arts Hour. We have in-depth conversations with Mississippi artists, writers, musicians, and other creatives. The Mississippi Arts Hour every Sunday at 5 on MPB Radio or download it as a podcast. You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHI Certified Inspector and Inspector Like a Girl and Licensed Contractor, Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. Join the conversation this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. All right. So this morning we've got a – do we even have a caller ready, Java? We ready for that? Okay, yeah. All right. So let's go to the phone. We'll go to John from Mobile, uh, and he's got a comment on finding – those studs. You with us, John? I'm with you. I'm 72 years old, and I've done a few remodeling projects in my day. And I do have a stud finder, but when I need to find a stud, I tap the wall with my finger and listen for the change in the sound. And then I take about a a, a 16th-inch drill bit, Uh drill a tiny hole. If I come out with wood, I'm good. If I don't, I I fill the hole up. Okay, so what uh, John John is saying that he bare knuckles this thing, Pam. He he literally he has like the unicorn magic knuckle. He can knock on the wall and hear the different tones. It, it, am I am I saying that right? Yeah, if there's no stud, you, you get a hollow sound, and when you get the stud, you, you get a, a bit of a louder sound. That you say, okay, there's, there's there's something back there. Works with cantaloupes too. The, the the thing that he's saying is, uh, <laughs> Pam, is that uh, you know you can knock along a wall and kind of feel you know where the tone changes because the wood behind it, and that is absolutely true. I will tell people I have used this method a hundred times. I've also missed the stud about a hundred times trying to use this method. So it is it is a refined art, I would say. Uh, what do you guys think about that method, Jeff? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I I tend to agree with you. I I'm 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 not that good, right? So, <laughs> but now <clears throat> I, I've 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 heard of people doing it. I've seen people do it. Uh, I you know again I like the flashlight, but hey, that's the reason there's chocolate and vanilla. That's so. right. Good man, good man. All right, uh, we've got another caller on the line. I hope that one helps out. Stephanie is on the line in Memphis. Oh, 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 and she may have some experience with this uh, slowing the door from waking her up from her two-year-old <laughs> child banging. Right, Stephanie, you with me? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Enjoy your show. Um, they make little softeners, sound softeners, for like your kitchen cabinets and <clears throat> other other things. So you can just affix those on the door, and it muffles that sound. For ch- but although it might keep it from latching, in which case you got an exacto knife, you can narrow it down. But there's that. Okay, she's saying that these are softeners. There are there are like these things that you can uh, like pads, I guess. You did mean like those uh, felt pads. Is that what well, they come in felt, but they also come like little rubber. They some of them are clear, some of them are white, but they're specific to kitchen cabinets to soften the sound of a close. Yeah, they're specific to kitchen cabinets. They're felt or rubber. I know I bought some a while back when I redid the kitchen cabinets in my house, and I used like these little. It was almost like a clear plastic dot. That it just like stuck to it, and yeah, when you close the door instead of going wood to wood, 
you know, it, it hits that rubber. So you're a That's little bit That's an awesome off. idea. That's it a great is, idea. Assuming your doors aren't so c- tightly cut that they they won't take any more room. You know what I'm saying? Does that make well, any put sense? It on the, well, put it yeah. put it on the stop side, not yeah, the, so, yeah. Not the, yeah, not the not the jam, but the but the stop. Okay, all right, on the stop. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. We'll keep moving with that. Thank you very much. And uh, ooh, let's get to an email. We just got that one in. Um, or okay, I'm not sure if this is the right place to ask, but how can I take the door off of my GE oven? So I can really get in there to clean it. And will I need help? <laughs> <coughs> and my first thought was, man, you want to clean. Yeah. I, I'm not about to take something <laughs> apart. <dude." laughs> I understand, though, because when you're like leaning over that thing trying to get in there, that's a long way it to is, go. I, it is. And you know what? I have terrible visions of my poor mother in my childhood trying to clean the oven from, you know, we had mm-hmm. three boys in the family, so God knows what was on the bottom of that oven. But, you know. I think I'm going to get a pole. A pole? With a cleaning thing on the end of it, so I can just stand there and put the pole in there and scrub around. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you use a, now I'm not going to use the same one, but you have the little rod that you use to clean your toilet. That's true. So it's what, got a pole. What? Well, <laughs> Well, let me ask. Have you, I mean, uh, can you take the door off? I mean, I guess you can. Of course, it went on there some way. Well, taking yeah. off is never as much problem as putting back on. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I am so good at disassembling stuff. It don't ask me to put it back together. <laughs> right. It takes me a minute to get it all back together. <laughs> well, you know, keep in mind, those are... Those not maybe not necessarily spring loaded hinges, but they're those are self closing hinges. So mm-hmm. it's not you know there is a little bit of technology there, but I would think that you could take the door off. Uh, if I am absolutely dead set on taking the door off, um, I'm probably going to call my friend Google. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely look that up, and I would take pictures along the way. When you start to undo a screw, take a picture. Take a picture. Yeah, yeah or video the mm-hmm. whole process so you can do it. Yeah. And let me mention this, and Jeff, because you build houses, the new appliances are smarter than me. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes. I, I'm just not sure I'm taking the door off. I, I just I don't see the value, but... I'm not the one that does the cleaning either. So right, yeah, maybe time for a new oven. Well, uh, because you got to clean it. That's like trading cars because you need tires. That's dumb. Why not? Uh, all right. no. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you need a reason, right? I mean, we can. Listen, we can justify anything. Right. All right, folks. One of our favorite uh, older guests on the show here. Older, not meaning because they're old, because they've been calling for a while. But Timothy off the grid in Louisiana is calling. Timothy off the grid. Oh, I'm so glad He's you here called, to tell Timothy. us about power and phone. And, and man, where, where were you three weeks ago? I was enjoying my solar panels and, and wind turbines singing in the, in the wind. I was enjoying the heck out of it. You know? You lost power, did you, Timothy? Yeah, I didn't. I haven't lost power in 13 years. Timothy, if... if I haven't had an electric gun in 13 years either. Well, if you didn't hear, Timothy has uh, not lost power in 13 years because he's been on renewables that he designed himself in his backyard, I think. Uh, so, Timothy, what were you going to say today? Well, I also want to, you know, one of the things I added uh, two years ago was a cistern. And I kept the water off my barn. You know, a half-inch rain... Gives me uh, 660 gallons. Wow. So, okay, what what Timothy is saying is that he got a, uh, uh, Pam couldn't hear that, but he got a cistern last year, and and it made all the difference in the world, especially, think about that water, and everybody else in the world losing their water, losing plumbing, losing all that other stuff. Timothy's over there rolling in it. He didn't use any of the utilities that got turned off, so he's just fine. Well, Timothy, uh, once again, you've proved to be the the smarter mouse in this situation. So thanks a lot. We appreciate your calling. The number of calls is 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Okay, so I've got uh, the email here. 
thank you so much for your show. I've got a few questions. Uh, what do you recommend for filling holes in grout? That's a that's a tricky question. We've talked about this on the show before, and uh, um, talked about how you know yes, you can have dips and and holes almost where the grout may not have been put in solidly enough the first time, and they may the holes may bust open. The one thing you can guarantee is that you'll never put grout back in there that will look exactly the same as the grout that's currently in there. Uh, that's even, right. Even if you purchase the exact same color from the same store, same company, everything. So um, one thing you could do if you want to, if you want to make it perfect, you take the grout out and regrout. Uh, but what what is another way to deal with this? You've got little holes in your grout where, you know, I mean, you can patch it. It just won't look the same. What do you guys think? You know, we, we, we run in this situation a lot when we're doing, you know, kitchen remodel or bath remodel and we leave the existing tile. We will go in and re-grout the entire area. So what do you, you have somebody go in and just kind of dremels everything out the first day and then Well, we don't necessarily go to that expense unless the customer wants to pay for that. Uh-huh. You can put you can put new grout over old grout, just clean it good. Oh. And and you know, it's it's kind of like painting your your walls. You could spot paint, but if you'll paint from corner to corner, you're probably going to come out with a little bit better situation. So just hmm. regrout the entire floor, clean it, regrout it, floor backsplash, you know whatever whatever you're doing. Right. right. Hey, that's a great idea. Okay. Boy, that does take a lot less effort than my way. Huh. Well, and it's you know it's 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 a lot more cost effective than chipping all that grout out. So. Right. All right. Thank you very much. Number to call is 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Let's go ahead and take another, our last break of the hour. And if you want to get your call on, you still have time for your home improvement question. Call us with your questions, comments. Just tell us what project you're working on. 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.com. Org. We'll be right back. This is Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pivas, ASHI certified inspector and inspect it like a girl, and licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. All right, this morning we are uh, answering your calls, all kinds that we're getting. We've got Joey right now in Oxford on the line. Joey, are you with us? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here with the guest. Joey, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Sorry, I guess there's a delay in the phone. All right, you go ahead, man. Uh, tell us what's going on. Well, uh, I was just going to comment on uh, the two earlier topics around uh, the stud finder and then also the slamming doors. Uh, my suggestion is, you know, with a lot of the newer stud finders, if you make an investment of about $30, you can get a stud finder that not only locates your studs, but will also let you know if there's any pipe or electrical that's laid in behind it. Uh, I've found it to be handy for myself, especially being a newer homeowner, um, where I'm not running the risk of, you know, finding a stud and then drilling into something that's uh, laid in behind it. Um, and then secondly, with the, the door, uh, I do agree the, the cabinet dampeners, uh, the little ro- uh, rubber pads do work, but sometimes because of how hard they are and if it's a solid wood door, uh, you still kind of get some of that slamming. But they do make a seal uh, that's actually on an adhesive strip. It's made out of foam, and it's, it's less than a quarter of an inch thick. And what I've found with my doors is if you put those in the corners of the doors, uh, it'll stop that slamming, and at the same time, it doesn't push the door frame where it latches far enough away where the door doesn't latch any longer. So those, those are just my two suggestions for anybody that's running into those problems. Thank you. That was fantastic. Did you did you guys get to hear that, uh, Pam and Jeff? 
We did. I did. Yeah, uh, talking about those two suggestions, that's fantastic. And one thing you mentioned was uh, uh, spending a little money on a decent stud finder so that it can tell you where your electrical and plumbing is also. There are a couple of those things really neat that you can plug in to your your smartphone. And now, now it, I'm not saying they're cheap, but you can plug it into your smartphone and basically see inside your walls. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but but if you look online, you can Google this, YouTube it. Uh, you can see there's a, it's a gadget you put on your cell phone. And you can look behind the wall and see a plumbing pipe or a, a electrical line or a stud in the wall. So something to look for there. I can tell you in the construction and home improvement industry, however much you want to spend on the tools is however much you can. They will make a tool for you and charge as much as you want. So uh, however you choose to do that. Anyway, let's go real quick. We've got an email no, I lost it. There we go. What are your recommendations for sealing fireplaces? This one kind of scared me a little bit, guys. Uh, when it rains hard, there's leaking on the inside of my fireplace. Okay. Okay. So so somewhere water is getting in when it rains to your fireplace. My feeling on fireplaces is that this has never been a DIY area. What do you guys think about this? Could be a chimney cat as well something coming down if it is as simple as a chimney cap um yeah very simple very easy to fix now what we have found over the years these masonry fireplaces when you get up to the very top uh the cap only covers the flue but the actual chimney is bigger than the flue obviously so it covers the flue so what they do, they take mortar and bevel that down. Well, the first thing that will deteriorate on that fireplace is that exposed mortar. So that's a good leak point. Um, flashing where the where the chimney comes through the roof is an excellent leak point. <clears throat> Your cricket behind the chimney is a leak point. No. Wait, wait, did you just say cricket? A cricket, yes. A cricket, okay, you're going to have to do better on that. What? What is okay, that? A cr- help, help me with this, Pam, but a cricket is a piece of um, normally made out of, of metal, and it's um, when the water comes down the roof, instead of it hitting just that flat part of the chimney, yeah. there, there would be a point almost like a, a inverted pyramid almost. Or half of a pyramid. Oh, okay. So when the water comes down, you know, it, it hits that, and it and it flows around the chimney. That's called a cricket. Okay. So there are so many leak points on that thing. Uh, but Pam's suggestion of a chimney cap, and then uh, the other thing that we always recommend is a product called Siloxane. It can be sprayed on masonry, will not change the appearance of that product, and it does seal. It's a very, very good product. I've used it personally many, many times. So this is something a DIYer can do. Uh, well, again, you're you're on your roof, so. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you need to hire Jeff's teenage sons. He sends his kids up on the metal roof. Right, right. right. Clean it off. <laughs> <laughs> You are, the, the more you bounce. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Number to call is 877-MPB-RING. Uh, That's 877-672-7464. We were talking about women in construction going into this. And, uh, Pam, I got to ask. You know, we, or, mm-hmm. or, we heard your story when you first started. But what – and I know that you had construction in your family, right? I did, yes. So it was. Uh, how did that happen? How did you end up landing in a profession that has, at this point, only ten percent females in this profession? And I've got to believe that that's a high point. You know what I'm saying? It is for home inspectors that the national average for home inspectors with the American Society of Home Inspectors says about one percent of inspectors are female. Oh my gosh. Seems so like there's a big not opening. Very, 
It is a wonderful opportunity, wonderful opportunity. And when I started back in 2003, I really shied away from letting people know I was female, thinking that it would be a detriment. Right. But what I found was that it gave me this amazing opportunity because people started saying, we want that. We want that lady to do the inspection. Right. So I um, really began to see a lot of my business coming because I am female. And we, Hmm. I mean... Inspect it like a girl is, um, and we actually, our tagline is we look better. (laughs) (laughs) I've never known that. That's awesome. (laughs) Inspect it like a girl because we look better. That is so awesome. Isn't that great? I need that on a flag in my office. I know. I wish I'd thought of that all by myself, but I have to give the credit to another gal who worked with us for a while, but... Yeah, women who um, – and it's it's a great career for women who don't want to sit behind a desk mm-hmm. or don't want to have to, you know, work in an office. The construction industry is just wide open. And there are some female builders here in the Jackson area mm-hmm. who are awesome. Oh, boy, they do such a great job. Right. So I would really encourage and, – and I'll open myself up. I mean, you can – Email us here at Inspect It Like a Girl. Well, do it at We Can Do It at inspectitlikeagirl.com. Right. If you have any interest, and um, I actually mentor quite a few women around the country mm-hmm. uh, who are getting into this. So um, I just have a passion to see more women involved right. in the construction industry. And I am going to guess on, um, on Jeff, but I will let him respond. I think Jeff... Uh, doesn't care what sex the person is on on doing his job as long as it's properly done and at a efficient time. Absolutely, I'm I'm gonna tell you right now. I've said it many many times. We need young people in this industry, and I mean all of them. Yeah, I, he didn't say a gender there. Uh, no, we no, just no, need young I, people. I, I promise, I do not care. We need painters, electrician, masonry, sheetrock framers plumbers hvac and and guys i'm telling you right now there is a tremendous living in this you can make a heck of a lot of money that's true that's true all right folks well that about does it fix it 101 is a production of mississippi public broadcasting think radio and is funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you our show is produced by mr java chapman our call screener today was liz gill for pam pibus and jeff sammons I'm Jason Klein. Stay tuned for our Wednesday 10 a.m. program, Everyday Tech with Jay White. And join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101 only on MPB Think Radio. This forecast is underwritten by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi, providing health and wellness tips on their Facebook page. Nice quiet weather in place for today and nice little warm up expected tomorrow and then our next week system moves through on Friday that can touch off just a little bit of wet weather. Oxford today, sunshine increasing our high this afternoon near 60 degrees, a little patchy fog possible tonight and overnight low in the upper 30s. Greenwood expected to see sunny skies today, our high this afternoon, into the lower 60s. Tonight, a mainly clear sky, overnight lows, upper 30s to near 40. And in Pascagoula, nice mixture of clouds and sunshine today, our high in the upper 50s. Tonight, mainly clear, overnight lows, near 40. I'm meteorologist Sally Russell. This is Think Radio.